Today, I want to talk about three things. First, how we leverage two tremendous assets. On one hand, our ability to make molecules of astounding chemical diversity, and on the other hand, our market reach through partners and through our own brands to realize value from ingredients. Second, how we use our discovery process to find molecules that have what it takes to win in markets where we can move the needle. Third, how our capabilities for molecule selection, scale up, applications development, and commercialization translate to real world successes in delivering on the promise of, synthet of synthetic biology. Before we do that, let's quickly refresh from the first mini series event, which highlighted science and technology. You will recall that at Amherst, we disrupt conventional production systems that rely on destructive and non-sustainable practices and replace them with a highly scalable clean manufacturing platform. We precisely engineer microbes like Saccharomyces cerevisiae to fermentatively convert sugar into ingredients that we use every day in our lives. What we can make with this platform is unbounded in diversity. This chemical dendrogram represents 500 molecules classified by chemical functionality and we've produced 250 of them through fermentation. These 250 unlock thousands more. Not only can we access upstream biochemical intermediates, but every time we optimize a pathway, we can produce hundreds more related compounds. Moreover, we can use simple chemistry to further diversify every scaffold. All told, we can access hundreds of thousands of potential targets, representing over half of all small molecule diversity in nature. This technology is at the core of our value. As John calls it, it's our golden goose. It's the ability to make molecules and the ability to scale molecules, 13 to date to the metric ton or even kiloton scale, faster than anyone in the industry. These, build, these skills build on themselves. Every time we scale a molecule, it makes the next one easier and faster because we leverage know-how in pathway engineering, in analytics to measure the molecules, in developing processes for fermentation and purification, in running unit ops at manufacturing scale, and much more. But technology on its own doesn't make impact. It's what you do with the technology that matters, which brings me to our next capability, our skill connecting ingredients to applications. In the realm of personal care, we have some of the most effective formulations in the market today as borne out by extensive clinical studies and benchmarking. Like our core technology, this know-how builds on itself and becomes exponentially stronger over time as we shore up our knowledge base. And in applications where we are not expert, we partner with the top voices in their respective markets to ensure that we are working on the most relevant and urgent applications. Finally, the real value and impact come once our ingredients are in the hands of our customers and partners at massive scale. This is why we've invested in becoming one of the most trusted voices in clean beauty and personal care. This is why we're leveraging economies of scale across our formulation, manufacturing, distribution, digital infrastructure, marketing, and consumer experience capabilities to grow brands that will reach new audiences. And this, again, is why we always select top partners in their respective markets to drive adoption, scale, and impact, even in areas that are not core to our business. I want to share an example of how value shows up through our capabilities of scaling ingredients, identifying applications, and getting them to market. Here, a single molecule, farnesine, has given rise to, to billions of dollars in value to the company through a variety of applications that can access a wide range of end markets. In every single one of these examples, we provide a no compromise solution, best performance in this category, for the best cost, using a sustainable process. And note that the bottom four products are all direct derivatives of farnesine, showing how combining fermentation and chemistry amplifies value. Now I'd like to jump to our discovery pipeline. We have hundreds of thousands of molecules to choose from. To figure out which ones are worth making, we apply three filters, market, technology, and efficacy. First, market. We are always looking for a large TAM and consolidated market. The most impactful targets are often ones made from animals or plants and come from a challenge supply chain that is subject to variability in price and quality. We also look for the value that a molecule can drive for our brands and partnerships through offering a distinct advantage in cost and performance. Second, technology. All of our products must fulfill our no compromise criteria, one where we can produce the best ingredient at the best price and sustainability profile. We also evaluate the investment needed to make this molecule, 
How much can we leverage our experience in R&D, PD, and manufacturing in bringing this to market? Can we piggyback on strains, processes, and capex already in place? If not, can we validate the market, justifying the investment? Finally, we look for efficacy. First and foremost, the molecule must be safe for its application. Second, we go after molecules that have best-in-class activity in their respective applications. Finally, we're always looking for complementary and synergistic functions to ingredients in our portfolio so that we have the best palette of ingredients available for our formulations. Now I'll give a sneak peek at two ingredients that are in the discovery phase. Both build on molecules that we have scaled in the chemical space not related to terpenes. In both cases, we have yeast strains stored in the freezer that can already make the target at commercial titers. One strain was designed and built entirely by our proprietary AI and automation systems and required no hands-on strain engineering. I'm just going to repeat that. One strain was designed and built entirely by our proprietary AI and automation systems and required no hands-on strain engineering. The second we've already produced as an upstream intermediate of an, of an ingredient that we've previously scaled. Molecule 1 has multiple applications and a sizable market, but is a classic case of being constrained in growth due to limited supply and high cost. Despite its outstanding proven efficacy and potential to enhance formulations across all of our personal care and beauty lines, it's too expensive to use in products with accessible price points. Our technology is a game changer and would allow dramatically lower cost and therefore greater access at more price points at a higher concentration in use. Not only do we already have the strain in the freezer, but we have experience at the manufacturing scale with every unit op needed for its purification. Molecule 2 has several applications in concentrated high volume markets and has synergies with both our brand formulations and partnerships. There are literally thousands of peer reviewed papers in the medical literature extolling its health benefits and it's also been tested to great effect as a cosmetic active, a natural preservative, and a nutritional supplement for production in agriculture, yet has never been available as a pure ingredient because until now, there's been no good way of extracting it from plants. This is just two of well over 10 molecules in the discovery phase. We see our pipeline as an evergreen embarrassment of riches. Our biggest challenge is not finding value, but being deeply strategic about which of these opportunities to pursue. This funnel is one that we own in its entirety for the clean beauty and personal care markets. But we don't want to limit our impact to those markets alone, and that's where our partners are. We are proud to partner with top players in multiple segments. We amplify our partners' ESG leadership and return, and in return, our partners show us where to focus our technological might. Partners help us do three things very well. First, they validate targets, identifying opportunities to bring sustainable solutions in the most attractive markets. This knowledge allows us to start with the end in mind. Second, they help define the winning applications by bringing deep understanding of the markets and competitors, articulating best-in-class formulas with advantaged cost and use, and keeping their finger on the pulse of consumer trends. Finally, they drive scale and adoption, accelerating the impact of replacing unsustainable incumbents by providing privileged access to leading brands and markets and by developing applications and solutions that are plug and play for the brand. Welcome. The molecules or ingredients that we develop through our science are the foundation of our consumer brands. You can see them as building blocks for the formulations in our brands. We've developed a unique sugarcane based alternative sweetener, which we market to consumers with our pure cane brand. We have developed squalane and hemisqualane as two unique ingredients that underpin the formulations for our skincare and hair care brands. This is the unique connection we have at Amherst between the science and technology, our ingredients and our consumer products portfolio. With our technology platform, we can offer better performing ingredients at lower cost using a process that is far better for the environment. Now we'll move on to examples where a lab-to-market platform has already delivered value. We'll start with a molecule well known to our investor community, squalene. Squalene is a key component for our Biosense clean skin care and pipette baby and family care brands. Squalene is a molecule traditionally sourced, sourced from shark liver. Millions of sharks are being killed annually, which has a severe destabilizing impact on the oceanic ecosystem. Squalene embodies exactly the type of molecule we're going after in discovery one where we have the best efficacy borne out with extensive formulation development and clinical testing, one where we can offer the best cost and the best sustainability profile. 
Not only does it exemplify our no-compromise criteria, but we're also learning that this molecule enhances the efficacy of our formulations. This winning combination of, our, of criteria has made squalene the platform molecule for several of our consumer brands and has also powered its growth in the ingredient market since we launched it in 2012. Now I'll turn it over to our COO, Eduardo Alvarez, who will talk about our most recent scale-up of CDG, a minor cannabinoid offering important functionality. Uh, thank you, Annie, and happy birthday again. Thank you. Uh, let me go back to that golden goose uh, point that you brought up. At the core of our value is our ability to make molecules and bring them to scale at a pace that is unmatched in the industry. This is we truly, where we truly differentiate ourselves from other companies in our space. When you think about it, when we started the lab at a 100 microliter scale and where we end at 100,000 liters or more, you're talking about a billion-fold increase in scale, a billion-fold. And a transition from each step to the next presents many failure points that can derail the entire project. We have been successful at managing these transitions with well-developed fermentation pipeline where the data quality is robust and where we are measuring the right parameters at each step to enable success at the next scale. The capabilities needed to deliver this span the entirety of our research, process development, and manufacturing groups, where we can go from microliter to 200,000 liter scale. The numbers that you see at the bottom just represent our indicative throughputs, but let me show you a little bit more how this worked for CBG, as you mentioned. We started screening strains in microliters plates in, late, in the late summer of 2019, and we went through about half a million strains. By the fall, we had down-selected from that group 500 candidates that we proceeded to test in our half a liter to two liter scale in the labs. And by the start of the 20, 2020, we had down-selected it to a single-digit set of candidates that we started testing at our pilot scale by March of 2020. We were ready with our first manufacturing campaign by September of 2020. There is a lot of overlap and knowledge exchange in each step, but as you can see, this is a pre precise and, in fact, almost Darwinian process of selection at each stage that is driven by data and which has allowed us to rapidly crank and improve strains and perfectly replicate performance when we move to the largest manufacturing scale. Now, let me shift to discuss so how, how were we able to scale with an equal speed, volume, and quality. Let me go back to the CBG example to illustrate and highlight three parts of our lab-to-market scale-up process. First, we start with the end in mind. As you mentioned, we either through our brands or partners discuss a very clear view of what would of the best CBG product profile defined in terms of purity, color, product form, and of course, unit cost. And for CBG, an additional top priority was to ensure our fermentation-based CBG had no trace of THC. By the time we were ready starting our pilot scale in March, we already knew we were going to be delivered the best CBG in the market across all of these dimensions. This was about six to seven months after we had started the development of the program. Second, our scale-up toolkit allows us to select the right strains and production protocols to deliver that precise product specification with minimal variation as we scale. As you see in the right chart of our scale up activity at the lab, has a very tight correlation to the performance we would see at the 200,000 liter scale. We only select strains in, for manufacturing that we know beforehand can be successful. This is why we decided to run our first campaign in September for CBG at a 40,000 liter scale. The final part is to run focused, frequent campaigns that allow us to reduce risk, build a learning curve quickly, and most importantly, assure partners of steady, dependable supply. For CBG, we ran two campaigns in less than six months, and as our announcement last month mentioned, the second one 
had just completed in February was five times larger than the first and with costs that were about one-fourth of the original. Let me just also confirm that we have sold out all the volume produced from both campaigns. There is one final point about our production and scale-up capability that I wanted to mention and that provides significant structural advantage to, to us and to consumers and partners. And that is our production, footprint, and chosen feedstock, which is Brazilian sugarcane. Last December, we announced we had received full bon sucre certification, both for all our sugarcane feedstock, but also certi the certification applying to all the products that are fermented using it. Our partners care deeply to use ingredients that provide the sustainability, societal, and traceability impact into the products that Bon Sucre now offers. As Han mentioned initially, our ingredients allow our, our partners to amplify their ESG agenda. And to illustrate how this works, I'm going to use this example between clean Bon Sucre ethanol and compare it to our corn-based non-GMO alternatives. And as you see, our, our ethanol is better for our planet, with bon sucre sugar reducing greenhouse emissions by about one-third in comparison. It is better for society, with each batch having clear traceability throughout the supply tra uh, chain and also enforcing ethical fair trade practices. Finally, it's better for business. As you see, sugar cane, which is our largest raw material, is 38% lower cost than U.S. non-GMO sources. Now, let me turn back the conversation back to John. John? Great, Eduardo. Thank you. And thanks, Annie. Really appreciate your uh, insight and depth <clears throat> regarding our product platform. Um, let, me, uh, let me make a few final comments. Our thesis at Amherst is simple. Consumers are demanding natural products that are clean and sustainably sourced. This is true for all consumer goods, including beauty, personal care, health, and nutrition markets. We deliver better performing molecules at a lower cost, and they're sustainably sourced. This is our no compromise promise for customers and consumers that is delivering industry-leading growth and margins. To make the world sustainable, our company needs to be sustainable. The simplification of our portfolio and our continued operational performance enables us to become one of the first companies in our sector to become financially self-sustaining. This portfolio, combined with $250 million of cash on hand, over $250 million of milestones and earnouts over the next several years, and less than $55 million of real debt provides us the self-sustaining model and, and sustainable growth that is positioned to continue delivering transformational returns for our investors. We've invested heavily for 15 years to achieve this market leadership. This was not an overnight success. It's the right moment to accelerate we welcome you to join our journey to creating a healthier and more sustainable planet through synthetic biology and fermentation and the leading portfolio of clean skincare and beauty brands in the world.